I think over the last 15 years, ALS has got a lot more awareness. And I, I agree that before that, it was a little known disease. And now we're, we're getting closer and closer to treatments. People are getting more excited and we're learning more about the disease. And the incidence, the, the sad thing with ALS is the incidence is pretty similar to Parkinson's disease. But the prevalence is much lower because patients uh, don't survive as long as they do for Parkinson's. And so there's less patients in the community. It's hard because it's a rapidly progressing disease. I'm always eternally hopeful that we can, we can find something. But I don't want to let my passion for the patients interrupt my scientific ability to do good science. And I think it's critical that we all want to have a cure, but we have to kill hypotheses quickly. And I always tell my grad students and my other students, if something's not working, let's, let's assume this. Okay, it's not working, move on, right? Uh, move to the next thing. So do honest, good, open science, be collaborative, and let's work together to find something that really works for patients. It's all about the patients, uh, and we're constantly interacting with the clinicians, uh, talking to patients, finding out what about the disease don't we understand, because the patients can give us a lot of information back. So the patient interactions is very important, which is why the ALS network is very important. The other aspect is actually for my lab and my young lab members, young PhDs, young, young graduate students, if they meet and talk and understand ALS patients, they, they are more motivated because, because again, they really want to help and they uh, are more motivated and I find that that really stimulates them to, to work as hard as they possibly can towards the goal of understanding more about ALS and towards the final goal of a drug treatment. We are the ALS Network.